So we're going to have a look today at setting up an open LDAP server. This will be in first of a few videos just showing you how you can use open LDAP with Linux. So the first thing I'm going to do is just fire up Yast and we'll install the open LDAP server on my SUSE Linux Enterprise 11 server that I have here. So we fire up Yast, just type LDAP in the filter and we can see then the three options that we've got. Obviously we're going to choose the LDAP server. Later on we'll configure the client and in later videos we'll look at using the LDAP browser. It's not installed at the moment so it's going to ask us to install Open LDAP 2. Away it will go installing it and then we'll be able to configure the service. The idea of an open LDAP server is really just utilising the power of LDAP directories. They can be pretty much used for authentication into many systems including Linux, websites and maybe acting as white or yellow pages within an organisation. So it kind of makes sense centralising those user accounts, especially if you don't have a directory system that's using it. Or even if you do have a directory system like Active Directory or eDirectory, having a separate directory just to act as your white pages or for Unix or Linux authentication again makes sense. So on the first configuration page we can then go through and decide to start the service which we'll do. We don't need to advertise it by SLP and we don't need to open up our firewall, it's not running on here. The second page then just looks at your encryption section so we'll just use port 389, we won't enable secure LDAP I just don't want to get into the certificate management side of things at the moment. And then configuring the database. So the database has to have a domain name. It's picked up the domain name of my machine and calling that then DC equals digital airlines, comma DC equals com. And create an administrator with an admin account or an admin name rather than administrator. It's just easier to type. The account doesn't exist that we created when we create the database. and then just go through next. It tells me what it's going to do. These are all LDAP names that we're looking at. So it's going to create the database and one user in it. They're all comma separated names. So that's it. That's my LDAP server set up. We need to create some configuration objects to say where we're going to yeah, store our users, our passwords, those sorts of things. So I'll set up the LDAP client we don't have to use authentication on this machine. It's going to be the LDAP server, so I don't have to use authentication, but I'm going to tell it to use LDAP authentication. We could tell it to use LDAP, but to disable the account, so the accounts couldn't log on on this server. But we'll say no. Certainly for testing, anyway, we won't be able to log on to this machine. So we're going to point to the local host as the LDAP server. And we again, we're going to turn off SSL for the client. I'm not going to worry with the auto mounter or or creating home directories on login, we'll create the home directories on this machine when we create the account. So I just changed the base DN where we look at to be DC equals digital airlines, comma, DC equals com, and that will then pass through everything into the auto configuration where we then set our name of our user map, the name of our password maps, the name of the group map. So where we're going to start looking for users, passwords, and groups. We can store this information in the configuration object, and that's what we'll look at creating now. So I just need to authenticate. And we'll create the default configuration object. And we're also going to tell the system that when we create users on here, we will create the home directories when we use the minus M switch. So this will act as my file server and my LDAP server. The user home directories will all be centralised on this machine. So we're just authenticating to LDAP to configure this. That's all done now and then click OK. So in the first lot of install we're installing the server. Now we're installing the PAM modules for client authentication. Allow this to run through. A 
And now we'll jump through into our user management in Yoast. So we don't have any LDAP users at the moment, only our standard users. The admin user that we created is not a user that can log in to Linux. We can have users that can log into Linux and they're what we really call in our LDAP users, or we can just have users in the LDAP directory. They might be because they need to authenticate to other systems or they're just there as part of the white pages or with our admin account, it's just there for management of the system. To be a Linux user, you're going to need a user ID, a group ID, a default shell, a default home directory. So as we see, when we go through looking at the filter there for our LDAP users, we don't have any users. So I'm just going to jump out to my command shell and we'll create a structure for our user home directories. So rather than putting them in home, any of my LDAP users, I might put them into, let's say, export home. Then I can share that out on the NFS server. And the same thing on my real client machines. They will need to make sure they have a directory export home that is mapped through to this server. So I'll go back into Yars, we'll go to the filter set for LDAP users. We need to authenticate because now we're kind of not writing through to the ETC password file, we're writing through to the LDAP server, so we need writes on the LDAP server. Using the bottom down the bottom, we can bot button down the bottom, we'll get it right in a moment, we'll create a new user, so any name that we can kind of think of at the moment without offending anyone, so Joe James or whatever, J James, set the password, the same password rules will apply, so if we've got complex password checking, we will still get warnings about this not being a complex password if we set a simple password. If I go into the details, I'm going to set a user ID that's a little higher, so I'm going to start at 2000. That gives me plenty of space for local users, although I shouldn't really need that many, but I'm going to be well clear of any of my local accounts. Okay, we can set any other settings that we want, but the main thing I want to configure here is then just exporting or, or setting my home directory rather to be forward slash export forward slash home. So that's it, that's the user created. We'll go OK on that. Jump back out to the command line. If I run a command get ent password, it's getting the entire password database. The password database now also includes my LDAP server. That configuration is written into the ETC NSS switch file. So first of all, we just go through and have a look at the end of the password file, and we can see that J James is not in there, but there's this continuation marker. And that's telling us to read stuff from NSS switch. So if I look, then let's grep for LDAP in the etc ns switch.conf. So it says for password, we use whatever's compatible, and for compatible, we're including LDAP. So if I get back then as my ordinary user, Geeko, and we'll switch to J James, so SU minus. So this is proving the client's working on the machine and we've been taken to J James's home directory. Thank you and look out for more of these videos.